video we are going to be looking at undercoating so when we're looking at undercoating there's three sort of basic ways of doing it first one we're going to look at is with the rattle can um, so as you can see got a model glued to a box a block and what we're doing is using the spray can in short bursts keeping it away from the model night when you're talking about doing a uh, spray can and you're looking at the model depending on the weather condition is depending on how close you want to be to that model okay so a couple of tips um, spray on something else first uh, if you've got your uh, models on say a box or uh, a spray stick then just a little bit on the stick or the box first see how all the coverage is like um, and then when you come to spray the model it's always short bursts um, check the model see what's happening adjust how close the model is to the spray can depending on the weather uh, and what you're looking at is really trying to get an even coat on the model as you're going through it and you just achieve that with short bursts and just making sure that you're getting all the nooks and crannies uh, instead of just holding the rattle can down okay so that's the first one <clears throat> next one is uh, airbrush same principle, um, you, what you're doing with the airbrush is uh, again short passes with the airbrush um, obviously with what I'm doing at the moment is yes I do have the trigger pulled down I'm moving the model around um, and just keeping going on to dry parts rather than just holding it in one area uh, the model does look a little bit more glossy um but it dries pretty quick with the airbrush and i'm just moving the airbrush around picking my spots making sure i've got good coverage as i'm going around just making sure i'm hitting all the parts now with the airbrush obviously i'm undercoating black and i will do a second pass in a moment with uh, blue now with the airbrush what you're looking at is always starting with air and then just adding the paint in and then finishing with air as well as you're just going through. The third way which I'm not going to cover is using a paintbrush. Um, I don't think that you can really get consistently good coverage with a paintbrush. Um, if you're doing a one-off model maybe but I think using a rattle can or an airbrush is definitely the way to go forward when you when you're undercoating uh, especially if you're undercoating a lot of models at once uh, doing that with a paintbrush inevitably you're just going to rush it and it's just not going to be smooth okay so you can use a paintbrush but it's really worth investing in a rattle can or if you've got an airbrush obviously with an airbrush um <clears throat> so with the airbrush i've started with black and i'm going to do blue over the top and for me this gave me a darker finish than what the rattle can did so my son wanted to just use the rattle can uh here you can see i'm using the blue i'm just testing it on the back of my hand uh so this is now not really an undercoat anymore when i sort of like looking at doing the first base coat but it gave me a darker blue and that helped me when it came to painting the model because it already had all the low lights done in place uh, i didn't need to do much low lights on this um you know it was already done it was like pre-shaded i suppose you could call it um and the blue came a bit more a bit more navy than the rattle cam which i i quite liked but what we both had to do when we're painting the models is obviously mine was a little bit darker uh Declan's like the rattle can was close to the same shade but the problem you've got is it is still um a slightly different blue so you've still got a base coat anyway um so for me I feel that I was one step ahead using the airbrush than what you would with a rattle can um 
when we come to paint it I did a lot of wet wet blending on mine and it was just really easy just to throw on a base coat I think I started with one leg realized the different colors and then just base coat it and I had all of my, my low lights done uh, so that's it that's the three main ways um, <clears throat> a few little hints and tips I suppose is check test what you're doing on something else first um, adjust the distance depending on your coverage and just slow steady let it dry sometimes in between as well it's another important thing is if you are doing uh, airbrush sometimes you've got to give it a few moments to dry uh, my working area like I said before I'm moving around hitting the spots that are dry rather than just focusing on one area constantly checking what I'm doing um, and then just to adjust your um, as you can see I'm getting really close up now because I want to get into the deep crevices um, but just feel it and just keep your workflow going at a nice consistent pace let everything dry and that's pretty much it I uh, hope you enjoyed the video uh, if you did put a thumbs up uh, if you could subscribe and hit the bell that would be amazing and feel free to share uh, thanks for watching catch you next time